Hello, we are here with composer Enrico Chapella, who is the composer of Li Po, the piece that is included in uh, today's perf performance, today's concert. Enrico, welcome. Welcome to Overlim virtually. Thank you for the invitation and thank you for considering my music for your performance. Oh, it has been really, really a pleasure for us to work on your piece, Li Po. Li Po has many, many layers. So I, I want um, us to take the audience through uh, little by little. So the piece is based on a poem by a Mexican composer of early 20th century, Juan Jose Tablada. And that poem itself is based on the life of a Chinese poet of the eighth century, Li Po. So can you just walk us through this and walk us through the inspiration of your piece? Well, yes, this piece is, uh, as you said, I read this poem by Jose Juan Tablada. The poem itself is called Li Po when, when I was in, in high school. And since then, it, it, it struck me uh, as a very ingenious, a very uh, uh, interesting poetry, not only because of the, the content and, and the beauty of the words, but also because it, it is drawn in the paper, uh, making calligrams, as they are called. It's a, it's a calligraphic poem because Lipo draws the images that he is uh, proposing in the meaning of the words with the, the, the in the paper. So uh, it, it's the first element that I found uh, very interesting. He, he knew about the poetry of uh, Malarmé and, and so he imported this technique of, of making calligraphic poems into Spanish la language. So each page of the poem is by Jose Juan Tablades. Each page, page is a piece of art, pretty much. Exactly, yeah, because it's, it's like a drawing. And this has also deep reasons to be, not only uh, an occurrence, but the thing is he went in, in a voyage to, to the Far East and he learned there by translations of some French poets of Lippo, he learned about the, the, this work of, of this Chinese poet Lippo and he read a biography of his. And so he decided to, to devote some part of his work to Asian uh, inspired uh, things. For instance, he was the importer into Spanish language of haiku form. He was the first one to, to write in Spanish haiku. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the same book where he publishes Lipo, there are other poems which are ha haikus. And then Lipo was this poet that was part of the court of the emperor. And uh, he, he, was, uh, he appreciated a lot of the, the good life. He drank a lot and had a lot of women. And, uh, and so he, in his poem, Tablada starts uh, making a poetic version of the biography of Lipo, telling <clears throat> the reader who Lipo was. At some point in, in the middle of the poem, he quotes a poem by Lipo, which is called something like Dancing Alone uh, with the Stars or with the Moon. Dancing Alone with the Moon, I believe, is, is the, the title in English of, of this Lipo poem. So he makes an a Spanish translation of that poem where he says, and then Lipo sat and said, and open quotes and made, introduces the, the Spanish version of Lipo's own words. And then the, the poem ends with the death of Lipo that <clears throat> it seems to be <clears throat> that he drowned in, 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 in the in a river and there are some different conflicting versions about it but Lipo uh, Tablada's version is that he tried 
to drink the moon in his uh, in his cup in his glass of wine and that's why he, he ended up drowning in the river so uh, uh, this poem is, is a beauty not only the the, the, the words and, 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 and the drawings but also this depth it has and so I was interested in making another layer of quoting so quoting Tablada's poem that quotes Lipo's poem and I made this piece it was a commission by the LA Phil uh, for a Green Umbrella series with Esa Pekka Salonen in 2009 if I remember uh, and at that time I was living in Paris I was studying my master's degree in electroacoustic music in the University of Paris, uh, Saint Denis, and I, I decided to to, to uh, blend these, those, these two opportunities into one. So I made the same piece that was a commission for that. I feel I, I proposed that piece for my master's degree thesis. So it's a very uh, I, I researched a lot. So what I did to compose the piece was I made a, 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 a recording of myself reading out loud the poem. I practiced a lot, several times, as if, as if it were a, a musical performance, until I had the entire poem mastered according to my own uh, uh, taste of, of uh, poetry reading. And then I recorded it me uh, uh, reading the poem so then i made a transcription into musical notation of the pitches and the rhythms and and the dynamics and everything i did which proved to be incredibly difficult to <laughs> task because when the singing voice is rather is m much more simple from the musical point of view than the speaking voice because when one sings one restricts the 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 limits of pitch and the limits of rhythm and the rhythms of dynamic to to some uh, discrete positions let's say but when one reads a poem one make one makes huge glissandi and huge uh, differences in rhythm so it was a, a uh, a Herculean task to tra make this transcription, but well, this was part of my master's degree, so I could not dodge that effort. And so I, I, I did this, the, the whole transcription of my reading. And with that materials, I, I used that as my main material to compose the piece, which is a, a chamber orchestra. And for the electronics, what I did is I recorded myself uh, again, but this time only using uh, separate phonemes of the Spanish language. So I, I recorded all the fricative uh, consonants like F, S, F, whatever. And, and I did something with, with, with those and also all the plosive consonants like the P and the T and the K. Uh, uh, so with my own phonetics I build the, 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 the electronics which are at the beginning at the middle and at the end well there are so many uh, aspects of the piece that are fascinating so first is this is the vis to me the visual aspect of having the score which by the way the score includes these calligrams and I work, work, will try to put the score um, so up so people can, can see the score. Uh, the, the score has these beautiful calligrams, so it's beautiful to see. It's, it's great to see the score, and the electronics are actually there too. So visually, the score already is very artistic. And uh, then there is the part of the electronics and how the electronic world and the acoustic world merge they combine and they 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 exchange and they communicate to each other so i, I found fascinated the fascinating the way that that you research and you found the right tools in the acoustic instruments to produce some 
sounds that are very close to electronic sounds. And so at some point we, we just go back and forth and we don't know what's what. So we use a lot of, uh, or you, you use in your music, a lot of, of what we call extended techniques and multiphonics, something that uh, uh, even though they are not new, they are like very, very popular since the 1950s, um, are the strange sounds for people that they don't expect to hear uh, instruments be playing in that way or the extreme pressure of the bass and this growling sound that you get from from the lowest strings and um, and things like that so there there are fascinating aspects in the construction of the piece that i think are quite quite enjoyable for for us uh, let me tell you and it was a, a great um opportunity for me it was a great pedagogic tool to um, give our students the opportunity to learn how to explore these these different sounds that they can create with the instrument. So we are very thankful for that. No, no, my my pleasure, and I'm the thank uh, the thankful guy. Thank you for considering my music and and yes, about the relationship with of the electronics with the. As I said, I was studying electroacoustic composition at that point in my life in, in, in Paris. So this was my master's degree. I had to, to, to put a lot of effort on the electronics. It was, uh, it was a, the point, that was the point. And what I did is uh, I tried to find the same, for instance, this plosive consonants, the guy, bay, day, try to, to find equivalents in, in, in the instrument repertoire of techniques <clears throat> and also well, well, well all the, the, the consonants at the, at the very end when Lipo dies drowned in, in the in the river and there's this image in the poem that says that there's a, the, the thousand years have passed since then <clears throat> but we still have the the, the gong the, the representing the moon or the, the, the huge uh, crystal moon sounding as a crystal gong. So there's this image of, of the, uh, the moon and, the, and it's like a, the funeral of Lipo, let's say, and the incense going up towards the moon. And at that point I used the nasal uh, consonant like M and N and L to, to make this like kind of uh, a monk-like yeah. choir with electronics singing and at the same time the, the, the strings emulating that so yeah actually the, the, that was the point to make it I, I don't I dislike electronic pieces that the electronic goes one way and the musician goes, goes another that they, they seem divorced not interested in listening to each other it's <laughs> like 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 a bad like about jazz ensemble where everybody jams without listening to each other. So uh, I really try to, to. Well, I, I think this is a great opportunity for our audience to focus on that aspect of, of music that we call color, because, you know, people are always looking at music from the angle of melody, rhythm, harmony, and not very often people focus on the wonderful aspect of color and color itself in like in this space is being used to create so many so many wonderful things mm -hmm. and uh, i think is is a really a wonderful wonderful use of color um, to to create a dramatic piece uh, that is lipo so Enrico, thank you so very much for your music, and I really look forward to learning more uh, of your works and look forward to the opportunity of, of performing more of your pieces. Thank well, you thank, so very much. Thank you for inviting me about this thing of color. Well, yeah, I was studying in Paris, in, as I said already, and the school I ended up studying at uh, Paris Saint Denis had these teachers, Jose Manuel Lopez Lopez and Horacio Bayone, who are very much into uh, 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 spectralism, the spectral uh, school, which is mainly 
putting the color the as a structural um, beginning or or the main interest in music so even though my music doesn't really reaches their expectations of a structural uh, color yeah i i was uh, i learned this in, in paris that my music was, was before and after very rhythmic very stravinsky revueltas like but I, I was not paying attention enough to, to that, uh, the universe of, of color. And so it was an opportunity to, to, to grow there. And since then, color is in my radar always as one of the, the four aspects of music, a very important one, of course. You did a masterful uh, work on this piece, absolutely, in terms of color. Enrico, thank you very much. Thank you.